All right, everyone, welcome back. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. Once again, we're doing what I'm calling conversations with creatives. And this time we have Serafina. Serafina, how are you doing today? I'm okay. Well, my little thing that I'm trying now is saying that I'm not always good because that's okay. not always the situation or at least just switching it up. But I'm, I just like to say I'm living life because that can kind of go either way. But in this case, it's a good living life. I'm in San Diego right now. The sun is still up back at home in Chicago. It would probably be like dark out. So I'm happy right now. Can't really complain. No, that's a good. So here already right off the bat here, we'll come back to explaining the show a little bit, but I want to I want to um, investigate that idea a little bit because uh, one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, when you do ask somebody how they're doing and they don't basically give you a positive response, it's kind of like awkward, right? And so like sometimes it can be, you know, like maybe they can get into depth about why they're not feeling good. But if they straight up say like, oh, whatever, I, it, life sucks. You're like, oh, I'm sorry for asking. You know, it's like, so did that play, does that play like into your philosophy about how you respond as well? Yes, but I've yet to like fully break that down to someone unless if it was like one of my friends because I tend to lean more on like the positive side of things, like to not always be down negative, but you can't always be positive. Like that's just like, like there's going to be those negative times and like those times when you are sad, but it's kind of like when someone asks how you are and you are sad, what do you expect that person to do? You, as yeah. you said, like it's a little uncomfortable. So I'd say depending who it is, well, what about, I would like to be honest. What about for you personally? Like when you know that you're not in a good spot, but like, like I know I, for myself, there, there was like a, a good saw, like around my divorce, there was a good solid mm -hmm. set of years where I was just faking it. Like I was straight mm -hmm. up faking it for so long because I was like, I don't want to tell people I'm miserable all the time. So I was like, oh, I'm great. You know, even though I wasn't like, did have, yeah. you, have you had, have you experienced anything like that for yourself? Uh, I'm trying to think, honestly, if I am in a really bad spot, like mentally, I like, don't surround myself with people, like even in like public or anything that no one can even like ask how I am just because I don't want to give off that energy of like negativity or like bring, bring the vibe down. Like if someone yeah. was like, having a group hangout and like wanting me to come and be like, I'm just not, not there today. But so that's kind of usually distance myself. But if it does come into the situation that I do have to maybe fake it, maybe a little bit, but I try not, I try usually not to. All right, cool. But that sometimes it's, so, it is just easier just to be like, good, like whatever. But I'm trying to switch it up. I'm not a hundred percent there. I'm, I'm definitely, it's a work in progress. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so we're living life is what we're doing today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Breathing. <laughs> let's um, let's break down the show just a little bit more. If you're here and in the chat, that's great. Thanks for joining. We have, I guess, Tristan is with us possibly and Kirby is with us. Um, we'll try to keep an eye on the chat and see what you guys might have interested in talking about asking Serafina a question or myself. We'll try to get to it. I found it's hard to actually watch the chats while I'm doing these interviews, but we'll do our best to keep on it. Um, and then, but yeah, I think that's about it. Let's just... Uh, We'll just keep on going and keep on rolling. I wanted to start off with some kind of just hopefully fun questions, maybe get to know you questions a little bit more. Um, but first, before I say that, I wanted to also set the kind of the stage a little bit and, and be transparent about the fact that I was your teacher mm -hmm. in a class last year, and that's how we met. And so before we started the stream, I said I was going to ask you a little bit about um, that kind of dynamic. I know for myself, I still have a hard time being like, f like friends in a sense, or I, I put myself in a different space when it's like a, someone like a teacher, like a person that was in a position of authority with me, mm -hmm. like even after the fact so far, I still haven't been able to like everybody that's been a teacher. I, I still aware that they were once somebody that was kind of an authority figure um to mm -hmm. me like do you have anything is there any kind of um similar or idea like that or do you feel are you able to bridge like a comfort level with maybe some old teachers from high school or anywhere in your life or other people like that yeah definitely no that's a good question so for me i would say like with like you, like you and me i would say like I kind of, yes, I think, I mean, obviously you, you, I respect everyone, but I would, I have a little bit more respect since you were my teacher and you helped me with my education okay. in that sense. 
but at the same time like your personality and who you are like it's also at like almost like a like family friend friend level i can see just because like the way that you taught your class but if it was a different professor or something it might be different but with your personality Okay. I would say that there's not like that awkward gap, but obviously you were my teacher. So there's like that little, little thing, but nothing that I would like, completely hold back on. Maybe just something like with like the school system or something like that, because you worked for them. Sure. But in the past, I've actually developed like really close relationships with my teachers. Like I'm, there's this one that stands out in first grade, my teacher, we just like bonded so well. And she like just always trusted me. Like I would, I, cause I wanted to be a teacher when I was younger and I would like oh, okay. grade the papers with her. Like I would be the teacher's pet. Like I would help her out. And then I ended up, she ended up like babysitting for my family. And then I went to like her wedding and then I actually just saw her uh, like a couple weeks ago when she's down in San Diego. So, and now I like have that bondage with her. So that's the only one that like I've stuck like really close with. Okay, cool. Yeah. When you said, when you said, well, I respect everyone. I was like, oh, no, I'm, like, going to be under the... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No. Cool. All right. Um, couple, couple, hopefully, goofy, fun questions to kind of get to know you a little bit. So, um, well, first off, I, I keep thinking, I'm like, I'm, like, going in circles in my head. I wanted to set, let's set up who you are a little bit more before we ask some questions. So, the reason I, br I wanted to have you on the, this show with me was because when we were in class together. We had a, a couple of me one meeting in particular, like you were the last student I was meeting with. And we ended up talking for like an hour because we ended up going on all these tangents about YouTube, about different mm -hmm. things, about being creative. So let's, um, how do you define yourself right now when it comes to like what you're doing with kind of your YouTube and your social media and like this kind of outlets so you're kind of, I don't even know how you would define like how do you define what you're doing with your creative outlets on the on the internet i guess yeah that's an interesting way to look at it of like who i am with that because i would say i'm just being myself in a yeah. sense like i wouldn't i guess like the term technically would be content creator okay but that at the same time kind of like separates the two from like who you are and like what you define as so i would just say like i just I'm just like myself expressing my passion in a way. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we'll come back to passion, but so let's, let's break apart content creator just a little bit more too, cause you do multiple different types of content and what are those, mm -hmm. what are those? I know there's, I think there's, well, I'll, I'll just let you say what those types of content are. Yeah. So, I mean, content is just anything that's like produced in like the medium, like you're, you're doing it mostly like yourself, like you're the, I guess content creator using that word in the yeah. explanation. Um, but so my main like source is YouTube. I have two channels on YouTube. So one of them is like my personal channel and it's more so kind of just like vlogging, kind of like lifestyle, day in the life, yeah. college aspect with like my friends. And then I have another channel called Society Perspective. And that one is not based around me. I'm on the other side of the camera for the most part but i do interviews with people and just kind of like get the deeper level of what people don't talk about and i do public interviews so i'll go up to people in public and be like hey like are you happy right now or like yeah. what's your deepest fear like, kind of like getting that breaking that little awkward gap between life in a way yeah. and then i have like my own personal instagram but i don't create stuff that's really too out there just kind of more like my personal life so those are like the main sources okay for yeah. content creation cool we'll get we'll get nerdy on all that stuff as we go on um breaking down just different ideas around those things but i just wanted to set kind of give people a sense of who you are that might not know anything mm -hmm. about you if they watch this video and we're like they're talking about yeah. stuff and i don't even know who this person is yet yeah yeah so, so that's good we'll get more 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 into that but i wanted to ask you some fun questions to see yeah. as we talked before like I said to you, we said together that this is kind of like a time capsule for us in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to do like a time capsule of right now who Serafina is and what you're into. So let's some some really, you know, maybe fun ones. Like, do you have like a favorite movie or a movie mm -hmm. or even like show show slash movie mm -hmm. that you're into or you really like or that you're looking forward to checking out? Do you do, you do anything in that way? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm about to sound so lame, 
Um, I actually don't watch a lot of movies okay. and TV shows. Okay. I used to a lot, but it was just a waste of time. I've gotten like <laughs> honestly so dedicated to YouTube that yeah. I don't have time. I don't make the time to kind of watch anything. But one movie that does stand out to me that I did watch was Inception. Okay. If you've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris. Because that's I'll tell you that's like top movie, but I'm not on a tv show or binging anything right now so, no no that's perfect because that's what it's about it's like how do you respond to this idea you know it's like it's, mm -hmm. the response is not necessarily necessary not necessary to be oh this movie it's like oh i'm yeah. not really doing that right now but yeah but that's cool okay so what about music um are you into music do you, do you put on music while you're working is music important i know this yes. is actually a question i wanted to ask about some of your music in your youtube is like popular music um, and it's not, mm -hmm. so I wanted to see that relationship, but, um, how does music play into your life? Music is huge. Music, like honestly started to develop more than me, like not me producing it or anything, but listening to it can be such a game changer. I think music is so cool. It can, you can bond with people. Like the second you hear someone playing like your favorite song or something, you're like, Oh my gosh, you listen to Kanye or whatever. It's like, it's a bondage and it's like so cool. So I think music is really cool in that sense of like bonding people. Um, for me personally, music is huge. I mean, it's all like getting on like different frequencies. So if you're listening to upbeat music, you're going to most likely be more upbeat on like a higher frequency yeah. energy level. And if you listen to more kind of like sad music down, most likely you're going to be kind of more like on that sad, more like depressed side. But for me, I would say right when I wake up, I don't, I don't try to go on my phone. So, but if I do, it's for, to turn off my alarm. Um, but then I would listen to music or a podcast. And then before working out, I blast music like so loud in my car to like get my energy flowing. And there's always just a couple songs that always just like hit close. So yeah, music's, music's definitely a huge part of my life. So what would be that song? Like if you heard somebody's car or whatever, you're walking up, you're meeting a new group of people and they had this one song playing, what would be like the song that you'd be like, okay, these are my people. Um, I wonder by Kanye West. Okay. I wonder. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I wonder. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Music. Great. I love music too. <laughs> and I think, okay, this next question, I, I feel like you're going to have a lot to say about this one because we've already, uh -huh. you've already told me a lot about it, but books, what kind of books are you reading? Cause I know you read books. Yes. And so yes. what, what are your jam when it comes to books? Okay. So right now I actually have my book right here. <laughs> um, I'm reading man's search for meaning and then i have i'm also reading it's in my backpack because i bring it to work i read it on my break um it's the uh, human laws of nature and then the one i just finished what was that one uh was it how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie and then i'm always i'm always trying to get going with reading so i'm on those two right now so yeah so most of your what what how would you define this style of book it's like um uh, non-fiction like uh not like you can learn learn something about people's uh yes about who, how, self yeah. yeah i'm in the more field of self-development self and spirituality i would say and even some like business books i've been reading up on i don't read any like storyline kind of fiction books there's one i did read which is called um the alchemist which is really good and it had a really good meaning behind it but i just i just want to get something from the book and that like information knowledge there's just so much because these people that write these books they've already experienced like so much of life like why wouldn't you take their advice or learn what they can say and cram it into a book that takes you a week or month to finish like it's yeah. only beneficial you know so that's and i'm not gonna have my high horse and be like oh i'm such a good reader yeah. i just started reading like literally a year ago oh, okay. like it, like it wasn't it's not something i've always been into i actually i hated reading for the longest time because of like the school system and everything but now i'm like getting into it because it's something i want to better myself and not because someone's telling me to read or punish me what was that what was that um book or moment or idea that really that f kind of clicked for you was it like a was it, did it feel like a fast click or was it like a progression, like a slow, like, oh, okay, I read this, I read this and like, oh, now I'm hungry for it. Like, do you remember? Yeah, it was more so I wasn't, I think this is even in life sometimes, like 
sometimes when you don't even chase something, like it kind of just like comes to you in a way. Like I was not even trying to read. Like I was not trying to read. I actually, I just had a very like spiritual awakening type of moment in my life. And I kind of just had like a, an urge for, I could not tell you what it was. So I'm feeling to go to Barnes and Noble. I, I like, I would never expect myself to go walk around in Barnes and Noble on a good summer day. And I caught myself there and I was walking around the store for like an hour, like not even on my phone. I walked there. I didn't even drive there from my house. And then I just like got a feeling and then I just picked up this book and it just kind of like called me in a way. And then I bought it. And then ever since then I started reading and that was, that was almost a year ago. So yeah. yeah. And also when you were talking about reading books and why you like it and enjoy it, you said, this idea that other people have already gone through these experiences in a way. And so why not like learn from them, I guess, is the way I'm interpreting mm-hmm. what you said. Yes, exactly. And, and how, like, that's such a, I feel like that's such a hard thing to allow yourself to actually learn through someone else's experiences. I think humanity itself really w- wants to learn through their own experiences. And no matter how many times, mm-hmm. sometimes people around you say like, you should really think about this or do this. Or it's like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it until I experience it because, or like you need to experience something in order to understand what what they were trying to tell you. So Mm -hmm. like, where do you live? Like, since you already said that you're willing to learn through somebody else's experiences, like two, I guess two Mm -hmm. questions in that kind of idea. Like, when did you allow yourself to have that thought? Like, let me actually learn from someone else instead of having to experience mm-hmm. it like and where do you live on that spectrum yourself like are there still moments where you are stubborn about something and you want to just do, mm-hmm. do it yourself yeah i have two main things on that so i don't want to i don't know the exact philosopher but it's along the lines of saying the person who like thinks they know everything knows nothing yeah. so it's kind of like you <laughs> we don't know everything like yeah if anyone's a guy, I know everything. Like they're the one that knows nothing. And I kind of learn as like, I don't know anything. Like there's so much out there that I don't know. So I'm always, I kind of just like look at life as like, I'm a sponge. I'm just kind of like absorbing everything. But on a little bit more of the flip side, what you said of like experiencing stuff on your own, I think that there are specific situations that you have to experience on your own. Like if, whether that's like, a heartbreak or quitting your a job or something or business or you want to start a business or something. There's some things that I think you just have to experience on your own and have that. Yeah. But people can help you along the way. And another thing is with kind of um, like to your point of how much you kind of like consume from like the advice you get, you take in is I think it's totally okay to hear everyone's opinion. You can hear all perspectives but you don't have to apply it in your life. Mm -hmm. I've actually had a really, this is like the, I was, I wasn't even expecting this one time. Someone was older, a little bit older than me and was kind of giving me unsolicited advice. And it was just, it didn't apply for my life, but it applied for his experience. And he he was just trying to help me out. But I, I, that's when I learned you can hear other people's stories, but you don't have to apply them to your own life. Yeah. 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 I have a whole, I have a whole thing on unsolicited advice. I just, Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with it. There's been people in my life that it's like you get, you want maybe support. And we'll talk about this too. This is part of like the whole conversation I like to have, but it's like, you're doing something, especially with us content creator type people, you're doing something Mm -hmm. that you want support for. And then when somebody comes back with the, you should, you should do this. I'm like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. (laughs) I'm asking you to tell me what I should do. I'm asking you, Hey, check this video out or Hey, do this thing. You know, it's like, yeah. And that's definitely, it's definitely with the creative field. Definitely. Like you don't want other people's opinions kind of mixing in with your ideas. But if it is someone who has supporting you and like they, I think it depends if the person has your best interest at heart and like if someone was like, maybe you should change this, like think about it, but you don't have to change it. Just kind of see their perspective and see how it goes. It, uh, yeah, it's definitely. And there's definitely a spectrum of like, who is saying the kind of unsolicited advice. If, if like some other huge content creator was like, hey, you should really check, do this. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. But if it's like your mom, it's like, eh, I don't know, mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's> gonna... <there's... laughs> yeah. I live by, I don't know the exact quote off the top of my head, but. Yeah. Along the lines, like, don't take advice from someone where you wouldn't want to be. 
So if someone's not like yeah. ahead of you in a way, like why would you take advice from them? And you can take them from different people. Like you said, like if it's your mom or something, okay, maybe take relationship advice from your mom. And then from your uncle, you take business advice, but you wouldn't take relationship advice from your uncle. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like picking and choosing where you take like that advice from. Okay. It, my next question, because, because it's, I'm going to kind of um, cater it to you in a way. Mm -hmm. So I know you like the, you're hustling, you're ready, you're not watching movies, you're doing stuff, you're, uh -huh. not, you're creating, you're trying to do as much as you can. So you got to eat sometime though, right? And yes. what's your relationship with food first, but do you have like a, a go-to favorite to keep you, like if you're working on a project, you're editing a video and you just want to keep working when you don't want to take break, take a stop to like either go get food or make it, like what do you uh -huh. do? But then if you do have time to go out and treat yourself, what is it that you're going to go treat yourself for? Okay. Ooh, okay. I'm going to answer that last question of what, if you're if I'm going out, ice cream, a hundred percent. I'm a huge ice cream person. Like I think ice cream is is used for your happiest moments as well as your sad moments. Like if you think about it, like yeah, if true. it's someone's birthday and stuff or like little ice cream truck, yay, ice cream. But then if someone's feeling down, like what do you get them? Ice cream. So it's like, it's like a universal thing that you can use yeah. for anything. So I love ice cream no matter the circumstance. And then for like actual food, pizza, a hundred percent pizza and ice cream favorite, that's, like for sure. That, that's your jam. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do when you're, do you ever find yourself uh, putting, are you, because you're, you know, focused and stuff, do you ever find yourself like skipping meals and things like that? Or how are you with that kind of thing? Um, I would say, I mean, the whole relationship with food, it's definitely like just a whole, whole little, little thing. But I would say right now I'm, I'm actually been meal prepping, which has oh. helped a lot. So every like Sunday I'll do like meal prepping, which is good. Um, but no, I wouldn't say like I skip meals because of editing or something because a lot of my videos are um, going to be talking kind of more about like self development, and part of that is like taking care of yourself. So yeah. that's a huge component of taking care of yourself. And I can always I try to like, separate like editing and like eating because you don't want to like be doing both at the same time. You kind of want to like enjoy your food while you can and everything. So I try to separate the two, but. I, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> meal prep. I flirted with the idea of meal prepping um, before. And I found the thing that I have a hard time with meal prepping is the the parts that you like really need to make sure that you prep correctly, like the fresh food mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. Like, it's like you actually have to meal prep kind of in a shorter window because by the end of that, like if you do a whole yeah. week, it's like that fresh food ain't so fresh no more uh -huh. by the end. Yeah, exactly. Are, are you experiencing a little of that maybe? I don't know. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, I started, well, like, I don't think this this past week I wasn't able to, so now I'm making it, like, fresh and stuff. So it just depends on, like, how my week is going. And also, I work out a lot, so okay. I want to, like, get a little bit more muscle. So if I want to get muscle, I have to be, like, eating correctly and stuff. So that also pushes me to make sure yeah. get all the meals in and everything. I find, I don't know, I find... When you're working it's like when you're working out you have to actually eat more and it just yeah like, it's like oh my god this is such a it like becomes this whole thing it's like maybe i yeah. just won't work out maybe yeah just... it's like an, it's ironic <laughs> yeah for sure um okay yeah. one so a little bit of a uh question about t that you get to ask yourself in a sense so now that you've been kind of like get to know you as well so now that you've been doing society perspective for a little while right and you've talked mm -hmm. to a bunch of people i see your TikToks and things and your, your yeah. other videos and you've asked a lot of questions by now what is the like what's the question that you wish people would ask you do you ever have a question that you're like i want somebody to ask me this question or or has a question come up that just kind of maybe in the conversation with somebody you're like oh that's a good let me i want to have a chance to say that sometime or like yeah no definitely because it's like as i was saying earlier it's more of like the outside thing i'm not the one talking yeah and sometimes that's hard i'm trying to be a much better listener than talking so there are times where like i don't mean to but i'm like wait i kind of wish i could like jump in the conversation and like talk um i would probably say the first thing that came to mind was life advice yeah but at the same time like i'm on the younger end of life so i still have a lot more like to experience but another question, I think it's like, honestly, the big one is like life advice. I would say that sometimes I wish someone I would like somehow be asked or like, it, I would, if someone just came out to me like one message to the world, whatever. And I would just be like, boom, like whatever. So yeah, here it is. Okay. Sarah, yeah. Pina, do you have any um, good life advice that you could, what, <laughs> what's your best piece of life advice that you could share with us? Um, best piece of life advice is 
the past is gone nothing you can do about it futures you don't know where it is so all you have is like right now so focus on what you can do and take everything just day by day yeah. and also if you have something that you want to do just put your mind to it and you can do it yeah. that would be my solid piece of advice there's so much i could go on more but i, I that's yeah. like two of the main things that i live off of like every day yeah great awesome and that's a good mm -hmm. that's actually a good segue into what i wanted one of the things i wanted to ask you about was um you know kind of you said doing the thing you want to do right and mm -hmm. you're you've gotten a such a uh i don't know high i can't think of the right word but you've got a passion like we were saying earlier for this mm -hmm. youtube stuff that you've talked to me before like you would you could just edit forever you could just do this yeah you're like really into like tell us a little bit about that story so i was thinking before we we started this interview this conversation i was thinking about like so you're young enough that pretty much yeah, like your entire like conscious life, like YouTube has existed, right? And and the internet for yeah. sure has existed. And so it's like, whereas for me, I was I'm actually old enough for it's like I've yeah. I was pre internet, I was pre YouTube, and then that's I've, cool. I've experienced this whole thing as well in a different way. So like yeah. for you, like when was it? When did it start to? I don't know, something in you that you were like, let me make, let me tell my story in vlog form and let me like grab a camera and let me do this thing. And then you realizing you had a passion for it, like share that story with us a little bit. How did that yeah. go for you? Do you want like the story from the beginning of how I started in a way? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mean, as you said, YouTube has been around. I'm I'm nine, 19 right now. I did double check and I'm like, am I 19, 18? <laughs> um, I'm 19 right now. Um, and it was back in seventh grade. I or like around middle school. It was a whole like era that a lot of like YouTubers, like girl YouTubers were kind of like taking off in a sense. And I was just like obsessed with watching them. I was like, I want to be like these girls. Like they're so cool, like whatever. And then, so I was watching them and then I actually went to like some good like convention to meet them. And I just thought it was like super cool. And then for Christmas, I actually got a camera and I did, wasn't taking videos. It was just like solely just pictures. Cause I've just always had kind of like that is more aesthetic view on photos in life. Like I've just always loved taking pictures and documenting the moment. So I just want to like put an emphasis on that, that I've always loved capturing things and making things look kind of good. Mm -hmm. And just like having things for memory, like just like always keeping things little knacks, just having them for the memories. And then around like high school, I didn't even think about having a YouTube channel. Like never even thought about it. Did never act. It was so deep in like the sub, my subcon. Like I'd never even thought about it. Like I was never thinking about it. And then it was almost a year ago, which is crazy to think about. I kind of had to decide for college, like what my major was going to be. What am I going into? Well, that was around like my junior year, but it was more like um like senior year and then like coming to college i'm like wait i don't want to be taking pointless classes so i kind of had to like really think about it and then adults would just keep asking me and they were like what do you want to do when you're older and i'm like i don't know what i want to do when i'm older how am i supposed to know i, ha I haven't been outside my deerfield bubble back in illinois like i don't know what i want to do like i feel like i need to experience more things and so um do you know what snapchat is yeah Okay. Do you, do you know what a private story is on Snapchat? Uh, I can guess it's a story only with your close friends. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had one, I, I still have one. I had one of those and I ended up just like posting like a tangent of me being like, I don't understand how people expect me to know what I want to do with my life. I'm so young. And then at the end, I was just like, if you're watching like to my, like my friends, whatever, and like, just f do what you want because you live once, whatever. And then it, hit me i was like youtube that's it like that's that's what i wanted to do so then that next morning i got up my cash from babysitting i like counted it all and i was like perfect this is enough for my like camera that i want another camera for vlogging that i want to buy and then i i didn't tell anyone i go drive to the app store up in glenview in illinois <laughs> And I go there, I'm checking out all the cameras, even though I knew which one I wanted to get because this all ties back to seventh grade that these girls were using this camera. Mm. And it's kind of been like the vlogging camera. If anyone's into cameras watching this, it's the um, Canon G7X. It was Mark II, Mark I at the time, and now it's like Mark III. I think there's Mark I. I don't know, I just don't want to make that up. But now I'm <laughs> the Mark III one. And I, so I, 
I was at the store, I bought it and I remember what I was actually wearing. And it was kind of like more like an athletic look. And some guy came up to me and he's like, Oh, like, do you play basketball or like something? I'm like, no, like whatever. And then we just started talking and he goes, whatever you're here for, just make sure you, you love what you're doing. And I'm like, just so randomly. And I was like, that was just such like a sign from the universe. It felt like, so that's when I kind of just knew. And I was really, 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 really scared to make my first video. Like so scared. Um, I actually shout out to my siblings because they were the first ones to find I told them because I was talking to myself. You could hear it through the walls. They're like probably thinking like, what is she like? What is she always talking? Like what, what is this new camera she got? So I showed my siblings because for some reason, some people's opinions don't really affect me, but my siblings definitely do in a way, depending on the situation and so their input, they were very supportive with it. So if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have started my channel, but that's just kind of like the main, that was a lot, but that was kind of like the main yeah. essence of, starting youtube yeah there's a great a lot of good stuff to mine from that the one that i i wrote down is that whole love what you do kind of idea so mm -hmm. and for me it's like wondering how much that you've had to have this conversation with yourself yet maybe it doesn't matter at all but maybe it does like first off like you're honestly it feels like you're really young to recognize the importance of that idea i don't think possibly from what i've seen a lot of people mm -hmm. don't recognize especially in the college setting you know you you hear, yeah. I hear a lot of, and now that I'm teaching, I hear a lot of people say that kind of, I just need to get a good job kind of thing. And I'm like, well, just be careful that you yeah. don't, don't hate your life while you're doing yes. it. So it's like, I mean, you told a little bit of that story, but I guess the question I want to ask is how is this, um, how is it working out with the passion, the kind of what it is you want to do, what you're finding that you're loving doing and yet, and still needing to spend a portion of your time in like the university in school like are mm. you like is there any kind of conflict happening for, in that or is it okay so you're like you're fine i still want to go to college or like where do you feel mm. like that's living for you right now yeah well first off i just want to say that like i'm very grateful for the position that i am right now like even just like having my camera being in college i definitely want to i'm very grateful for all of that um but in the sense of well, like the first part of doing something that like you love and more so passionate about is i think part of it does have to do with how much reading i've been doing and also just the internet because in a way social media can be bad but it can be good and i'm more on the good side i listen to people and they the one you, i always hear this is these very like well-known people they'll be like I know people that have millions and almost billions of dollars and they are the saddest people. So that I just keep hearing that. I'm like, it, so really, I think I, I haven't even fully comprehended that it isn't about the money, but seeing all this stuff and walking on the street and walking, I, the other day I was walking in Chipotle and the worker at Chipotle seemed like the happiest person ever, you know, doing something very, what people would find to be sad. So that kind of made me realize it kind of is more so how much you love what you're doing and that emphasis, because I think like the money will come along later on if you're just staying true to yourself rather than make forcing it. But at the same time, like it's also life and you do have to have some sort of money to keep yourself well off. So I feel like having some people have like their job and then that they don't really love, but then they, it allows them to do this stuff they love. But I'm kind of more on the side why don't you make your job something that you love doing? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the emphasis on that. But in terms of what your second kind of statement question was in terms of school is if I'm being honest, like sometimes I'm like, do I need college? Like, like at the end of the day, like, is it even worth it? Like, again, I'm very, very blessed and grateful that I'm even able to attend such a great university. Cause I know there's so many people that would love to be in my spot but I kind of just look at it the bigger picture of like everything that I learned from first semester or the like last year, freshman year, I taught myself everything yeah. off of YouTube, reading, podcasts, talking to people, video editing. The school had nothing to do with that. But the school did have good connections with people, you know, brought me to you. So like, I think there's different aspects of it <laughs> that can be beneficial, but I feel like I can also make connections outside of college in that way. So honestly, right, like after my freshman year, I'm like, I don't, I don't find interest in school right now, if I'm being honest, like, 
right now i don't i'm trying to have an open mindset towards it but right now i don't see it being beneficial okay that's perfect because this is something that i'm um exploring with my own now that i'm fully moving into the position of being a full-time teacher what you just said I, I think i have an answer for that student right and i'm the idea is yes you can teach yourself and i i agree i i think you should if you can like everything that we're doing in in a university really you can learn through books and other things but mm -hmm. what you what what the university one of the things one of the main things that the university allows you to do is to like cross like double not double i can't think of the right word but but once you develop these ideas once you learn something have someone to bounce them off of like a physical person a, phys mm -hmm. a physical community so you can bring yeah. these ideas to the community to your teacher and and have a kind of a discourse around it that yes you can try to find that discourse somewhere else as well but it's like built into the university among a couple other things like resources like mm -hmm. um uh networking kind of things as well getting to know people so the commute for me as you know already the community aspect mm. is huge and i think it should be like the emphasis in a lot of ways because everything else like the practical stuff of like how to's is so easy to mm. access anymore but yeah yeah i think it all depends on what you want to do if you want to do anything lawyer teacher doctor mm -hmm. scientist whatever it is in that kind of aspect Yes, you most likely probably have to get, go to school. I wouldn't want some doctor doing <laughs> surgery on me that didn't get a degree or something. So I think in that aspect, yes, you have to go to school. Yeah. But in the aspect of more, you can do it by yourself, kind of more like the creative outlet and school doesn't help you, then I don't know. I mean, I see, I definitely can see your point in with community and everything. It definitely does bring that. Yeah. But is it worth the debt that you're going to be yeah. in to have that, you know, yeah. or how genuine is that connection with those people at the same time? Cause it's still in a bubble in a community. Yes. It's networking, but it's also the same people your age. And I personally try to surround myself with people that are older so I can learn from them in a sense. Yeah. And a lot of the people, I mean, I'm again, really grateful with like everyone here, but right now maybe it's just, I've enjoyed enough clubs or something that I just haven't found um, a lot of people interested in what I'm interested in. But maybe I just have to give it some more time and see how it goes. Yeah, there's an idea. I was when I was thinking about this conversation based on some of our previous conversations last year. You know, I was thinking about this idea that I've heard. So a lot of so mm -hmm. another thing that a lot of what we just said over the last like five minutes, and I think we I, I'm pretty sure we both follow this person is they, like Gary Vaynerchuk mm -hmm. is somebody that I follow yes. said yes. like everything we just said, you know, like in some way or another. Yeah. But one of the things that he said as well is like, he, he goes on in his short content, especially is like surround yourself with people that like in, inspire you, motivate you. And I, mm -hmm. I know in previous conversations, you you've, it feels like you've struggled a little bit with finding those communities. Have you been able to mm -hmm. find like more communities of people that, that kind of are at, at where you're at because it's i just feel like you know age plays a big role in um where people are at in their life and it feels like mm -hmm. you're you're motivated beyond where your age is i don't know yeah um i'm not i don't want to say like oh i'm better than anyone yeah. or anything it's not it's not in that sense um but currently like right now like physically people around me like not really yeah. No, I would say there's more people that I can text and like have like all over, like not all over, but like back at home. Some people, um, like my brother, for example, like definitely is very like motivated. Like not, I don't like the word motivated, but it's kind of passion driven like that because motivation like kind of yeah. goes in and out. Um, so like back at home, I have some people here. Not really, yeah. I would say right now, but I don't know if that's just more. Yes, there's so many people that are better than me, but more well off. But I just don't know if I, if they are one kind of like my people or two, I kind of want to like spend my time with that in that kind of area. I'm wondering, how, do you sense any? So, so we're both in San Diego. We both went. We both have a relationship with the San Diego State University. Mm -hmm. Um, and but I'm I'm curious if maybe I don't know. Let me just I'll just say this, like 
have you noticed maybe from so you're illinois is where you're from you spent some time yeah. in like just chicago area I, I, yeah. I saw you do some vlogging and stuff in there yeah like have you had enough experience i guess to to uh, to feel a difference of just the culture of like an area and how that might affect what we're just talking about because i'm finding san diego is real there's not a lot of highly motivated people in san diego just that's mm -hmm. my experience um and and I'm kind of disappointed about it, but I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you've felt maybe something similar to that in in your travels. Honestly, I would not say so that I would have anything to speak about that I've had enough experience in. So like right now, no, because also college is still a bubble. It can't just be San Diego as a whole. Like it's just because it's like the university. I can't speak for. The whole thing of like san diego i mean i'm sure there's people that are out there hustling and stuff that i don't know about you know that are just in their basements right now grinding yeah going crazy on life and not posting anything i think that's also an aspect of like shout out to all the people that don't post what they're doing and kind of just stay low-key and and let their like results kind of make the noise in a sense so i wouldn't as a, to your question i would not say that, like i i haven't spot an exact difference between kind of areas let's, let's make sure we're uh still in connection in like 10 years from now we'll revisit that question <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think there's yeah i think we need more time to, to yes. have a, a good a better like uh control group in that yeah area. yeah uh, for sure so i wanted to ask so one of the things i wanted to get your opinion on i guess so when i start when i got went back into this the university setting and mm -hmm. um you know I was surrounded by more people closer to your age than my age, like a vat, like, mm -hmm. and I was, I assumed that I made this assumption about like social media that did not match at all with the people that I was surrounded with. And I wanted to get from your perspective, speaking perspective, your, mm -hmm. your perspective of social media in general, like, so I was expecting a lot more people to be way more invested in social media and what was going on in your age group, especially mm -hmm. like, especially in the creative realm, like classes that I was a part of and TAing in. It's like, I just, I was like, to me, it's, it made, I was like, we should, you should all have a very highly active social media presence and, and kind of online presence. And, and a lot of students, the majority, very, very low level of, and so I wanted to get a sense from you with your peer groups and, and I guess you can mm -hmm. answer it in a multiple way because you're, you're a unique situation. Like you are highly motivated. So you have your own experience, but then you're also interacting with people that may be using social media for very different reasons. Um, and then yeah. maybe you've seen some people that might want more for themselves that aren't using social media. And, and I'm like, well, I think that's what needs to happen. Do you, so anything of that yeah. little, what I just said, inspire you to say anything? Yeah. So in my little, like, a lot of people like my dad say in college, for the most part, use more social media just to, like for their lives to show like the highlights of their lives in a sense, yeah. or more of like what they're doing day to day basis or week to week, month, monthly travel, keep up with friends in a way. And I definitely see what you mean about why aren't more people using this as like your kind of like creative outlet to like get yourself out there in a way. And I just think it just ties back to what you said earlier is like, a lot of people in college don't know what they want to do yet mm -hmm. and like don't know how they could use social media in that way of what they want to do. And also, yes, social media is great, but it's also like one, whatever you put out there is out there. So that could be a factor. And just in a way of like, people can judge you. People will judge you no matter what you could be the best person out there and people would judge you. So like, why would you even give yourself out there and you're going to kind of get that, get that hate. So that, that's not my personal mindset, but that's could be a possibility as to why, like, some people like are not willing to do that. What, okay. Okay. What's your relation? That's a good, that's a good um, question um, to find out about is your relationship with, since you are putting so much content online mm -hmm. um, and some of your, some of your, you know, YouTube, your vlog videos have gotten quite a few views. So I imagine you've gotten, um, some, Bella's in the chat. Some comments. Hey, Bella, what's up? Bye, yes. Bella. <laughs> uh, cool. Thanks for joining. Um, some of the, some of your, you know, 
comments could be kind of gross maybe i don't know have you come across trolly kind of comments and then how do you deal with it like how have you processed through that especially since like you know that story you told us before about how you got in you wanted to start and expose yourself out there and maybe we were you were mm -hmm. maybe still learning and still vulnerable about it but walk us i guess walk us through this process of how you've dealt with comments and and the the greater internet um, so that you don't get intimidated by it or you don't get, you know, put, yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just, the, I'm not hundred percent always on this mindset, but like my highest self mindset is that you could be the best of the best and there are going to be people that are going to hate you. Yeah. So why not at least just like give it a shot. And these people that are behind their screens, if anything, I'm not even like mad at them. I feel sorry for them that they take the time out of their day to be jealous of you, to hate on you, to let their negative emotions out. Like, I just kind of think like there must be something so wrong going on in their life that like they're finding the need to stir up drama or hate on you for doing whatever it is. Like I kind of do with peace. Like I don't hate on that. I don't hate on it back. Like yeah. I wish whoever it is well. Um, but that's kind of like the overall kind of general mindset. But for me, like specifically, I haven't had that I can think of off the top of my head, anything that's like hate, hate, hateful comments on my channel that is like directly, like personally directed towards me. Um, I've had like one situation in person that someone was like vlogging and was like weird or something, but I'm like, I can't change his mindset. Like, I don't care. It wasn't like directed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was directed towards me. I don't really care. I'm sure there's so much that goes on behind my back that I don't know about, but I don't even want to like give my energy towards that because it's behind me for a reason. Like I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, there's a lot of people that do support me and like that, 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 that support means one support should mean way more than a thousand hate comments you know like yeah. the fact that one person is supporting or comments on a video is just like that makes my heart just like not break it makes it so happy you know yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> i um similar ideas for sure um there's this kind of concept of like your view the view your view is your vote so it's like even if yeah even if people are hating on you it's like they're still watching it and it's like uh -huh. you're actually supporting it so it's like yeah and i've yes. i've turned it into like for myself i like uh -huh. i want people i'm like begging for the universe to give me something that will just bring out all the trolls because it's like uh -huh. then it's just helping the overall thing and like it'll get out there more i'm like come on let's do this because yeah i'm not too controversial at all but every once in a while i get political i get political yeah. i have political content on my channel so that brings out like the the opposite political spectrum uh -huh. um, and then they get kind of weird at times so that's really the yeah. place that i get kind of stuff but <laughs> but yeah yeah um all right cool uh what was i i, I kind of lost my train of thought i'll get back on here in a second um the one thing i wanted to ask oh okay i remember now thinking about this time capsule idea of going mm. back to what we were saying i wanted to put i wanted to get a little time capsule of where you are personally with kind of this the kind of like we're there's still i guess we're still in a pandemic i don't even know what is going on with that kind of idea i wanted to see from you like where you're living with that i that reality of you know kind of the covid thing that's still kind of messing with us and how has it affected you um how did it affect you when it started out and how does it is it affecting you anymore do you still kind of think about it as you're like exploring because you're doing a lot of like out in the public kind of things you're traveling a little bit you're you're talking mm -hmm. to people you're you're like how does that are you just like whatever whatever or are you kind of still kind of conscious about it like where do you live with that i've moved past it i would yeah. say i'm not dwelling on it i respect that if someone has lost someone due to COVID or anything like that, um, totally respectable. But I think you can't be dwelling on kind of the past in that sense of COVID and everything. And it's basically kind of, I, depending on like your health also, for me, I don't have any health conditions that it would bring me down. Like I wouldn't like, die from it or anything. So I feel like I'm, I'm not going to like stop living my life. I would say in a sense at the point that we're at now, obviously it was different a couple what years ago now, like that's or a year yeah. ago. It's like kind of crazy to say, but 
I don't even, I don't really think about it too much unless it's like you have to take a test to like go travel or yeah. be in school or anything like that. But I don't think about it too much. Okay. 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 I just wanted to check in on, on like how that might, because it's, you know, obviously, like you said, there's a lot of people that are still in a lot of different places with it. So I wanted to mm-hmm. see like where you're standing, but I also wanted to check in. Like, yeah. So you're at the age now where you can start using your, your voice in this kind of like, and we don't have to get deep into anywhere. You could take this any way you want. We could stay surface or we can go underneath the surface, but you, you're in a position where you could use your voice to, to vote in our country um, for mm-hmm. ideas and things like that. And there's been the la- this summer and through the last couple of years, there's been a lot of kind of politically motivated kind of ideas, especially like right now with like the Supreme Court, we have the January 6th committee, like we have different things going on. Like how much, if at all, has what's going on politically in our society kind of made you think about your role or anything, or are you nose down, I just want to make my blogs kind of thing, or maybe even in your society perspective kind of ideas, like has any of these kind of concepts come up where you've had to either share someone else's idea around it or kind of, kind of, um, check in with yourself on your own, like where you stand on what's been going on in our society with politics. Yeah. I had this talk with my cousin actually, and we were just kind of talking about, I don't even play a huge role in the economy of me being like working and everything. So I feel like I don't even have a correct say in some of like these laws and everything that are going on just because of my age. And I know at the same time I am becoming an adult, but there's some things that I'm not paying for and I'm not doing for and everything. But I've just, I honestly, I don't, I keep myself out of everything. I'm just, I don't want left, right, whatever. I'm just, I'm just, I'm my, I'm myself. And I think it's just gotten so divisive that people aren't even being friends with people anymore. And I just don't want to be involved in that because at the end of the day, for me personally, if you, if someone has like their voice and they know deep down within themselves, like their calling is to speak about their political party, have at it. Yeah. But for me, I don't have any calling. I've absolutely no say in anything just because at, for me, my perspective, if you're going to fight with someone, it's just going to take them further on their side. There's no, that's, you're not convincing anything else. You're just going to keep pushing out that energy that is probably going to get you nowhere in my sense for me personally. So with my content and everything, I do not go towards that, but with society perspective, with the interviews, I've had some things that are more left or more right, but I still post all of it because that's society perspective. That's life. Not everyone's going to be one way or the other. So I just post whatever anyone wants to say. And obviously there's some lines of someone were was swearing or saying some slurs or anything that I I wouldn't be like posting that there's definitely a fine line between like, okay, like that's actually not okay to post, but if it's just someone's belief then okay, like I, that that's their thing and they're fine with it being out there. Then that's on, that's kind of on like their part. Cause I don't, I'm not my whole thing with society perspective is there's no bias. Like there's no, there's no bias in any sense. The comments can say anything they want, but I'm not biased for anyone on that end to kind of say anything. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is good. Good. Uh, time capsule kind of, put a stamp on these kind of concepts and see, <laughs> let's check back in on like, you know, a couple of years, 10 years from now and see where you. Yeah, no, that's good. I'll what? definitely be looking back. <laughs> like, hmm, what's going on? That's cool. Um, I wanted to, so we're getting close ish to our hour. So, mm-hmm. um, I do have, I wanted to check in on, so the vlog and society mm-hmm. perspective, I wanted to get a sense of where you're at personally with like the progression, like, I guess there, I, I usually, I kind of ask these ideas around like, how do you feel successful and different things? So I wanted to get a sense of where, where are you feeling right now with the evolution of these two projects? Like, do you, have you got far enough along in either one that you want to, you're thinking about changing courses or if you've got some new ideas you want to do, like what, and maybe, mm-hmm. maybe even mention some some moments of like, wow, that was really cool. Like any like moments that's really like made you motivated while you've, while you've built these things. And, and I guess maybe on the other side of the spectrum going like, oh, I thought that was gonna pop, but it really didn't, nobody cares. Like, and I'm not sure if I yeah. really wanna do that anymore kind of thing. Like, yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you're personally feeling, I guess, of your two kind of outlets right now. Yeah, so um, if anyone's new for the, um, the live right now, 
So I have two channels. I have like my vlog kind of lifestyle college and the society perspective that I interview people on. And my first one was my personal one. So it's like, no baby in a sense. And that one I would say is more kind of rapidly growing right now, just because a lot of the topic is topics that I talk about is college and I'm in college right now and with San Diego. So that one definitely gets more views in a sense, but at the end of the day, it, I know people say it all the time, but views, likes, subscribers, it does not, it doesn't matter. It, and hopefully my future self watching this from now has the same mindset because I think that if you love what you're doing so much and you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter the views. Yes. Don't get me wrong. It is so exciting when like a video like does well and it hits the number, you hit that subscriber count and like you have that community. Yes. Focus on like the good of that. But I feel like if I just look at like just achieving a number or anything, it's not really going to be like not going to fulfill me or be satisfied mm -hmm. but with um society perspective it's definitely more of like a slower growth but sometimes you need that slow growth to like become something bigger versus just like it, t t having like an overnight success you know because a lot of those don't last long i'd rather build something from day one and look back in like 10 years and be like wow like good thing it was that like, you took it slow and just like kind of went with it in a sense yeah. so yeah. Right now I'm just kind of still testing the waters. I feel like okay. with both of them, I'm going to be changing the styles of some of them, but that's, what's cool about it is because like I'm behind the scenes on it. So I can kind of do what I want. If I want to switch it up, I can, if I want to keep it, then I can. It's not, I'm not under any like authority to be like, you can't be posting this type of video. So it's kind of cool that I'm able to do that. Do you have, so within that context of making sure that you're enjoying it, right? You want to make sure mm -hmm. that it's something you're passionate about that you're doing super important do you still however have like any kind of like goals within it like do you even i don't know if it's what what those goals maybe i don't know what those goals could be like they, it has nothing to do maybe with numbers but maybe it has to do with like i want to make sure i'm posting this type of content i want to make sure my quality is this type of way i want to learn more about this type of thing i don't know whatever those goals or it could be I would really like it if this channel had X amount of subscribers by this date. Otherwise I'm going to be like, eh. you know. yeah, definitely. So there's actually this concept. Um, it's called the golden circle. Um, wait, I want to give credit to who, um, yeah, who it's it by, um, because I do not want to be taking credit for this. Uh, okay. Simon S I N E K Simon sink. He started with the book, um, start with why. And I've, I haven't read the book yet, but I watched his TED talk on it. And I literally have the poster of it in my room right now. It's right there. Um, you start with your why, and then after your why is your how, and then your what, instead of starting with what, how, why. So for me with YouTube, like my more so why, I know it's so like cliche like to have an impact on people, but on a different level, like especially with society perspective is to make everybody feel like a somebody and make sure like everybody matters and give people kind of that platform to talk because I feel like a lot of people in life, they kind of just, you know, me, myself included, you know, you just pass by people. No one gets to talk about things that they want to talk about with people. No one gives people the time of day. And sometimes when I do these interviews, I just, I just let that person talk. And then after they're like, wow, like I needed that. Like I just needed to talk to someone. And I just think that's such an underrated thing in our like society that like, that's what I'm trying to switch with that. It's like making sure everybody feels heard and feels mattered. So like, I think more so starting with like my why is like my why is because to help people out and to make everybody feel like a somebody. And then eventually that a million will come subscribers or however, 10 million yeah. like, reaching far. Like you just keep kind of going with that. Yeah. So I think it's more so having that why is more important than having like the specific number in mind. Yes. I would love to have a million subscribers, something like that, yeah. but it's not going to impact people just by looking at the number. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I'm just, I know for myself, I definitely want that, that hundred thousand subscriber plaque. I'm like, yeah, I, I want that so bad. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. At the same time, I'm like, silver is my favorite color. Like the silver <laughs> plaque would look great in my room. Like, hundred percent. And I think everyone's motivated by different things. So if you're motivated by like the plaque, then print a picture of it. You already have it then. 
basically, you know, and then you just gotta, but then you use that as motivation yeah. to get the real one. Yeah. Yeah. That we've, maybe we talked about this before, but like that idea of, you know, speak like when, when you have goals, writing it or, or thinking about it in that sense of you already having it already yes. like yeah it's like what i've heard a lot yes. i try it myself at times but i definitely default into a little bit of a i want to but i also okay let me like re -re rephrase that yeah i have you know i'm huge huge on that you gotta you don't want to have like a big ego about it but just act like you already have it and then it's 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 bound to happen it's bound to come it's just a matter of how hard are you willing to work how what's your faith like do you believe in yourself that much and letting time kind of do the rest and seeing yeah. how long it takes yeah somebody i've i've not i have to look into this more but somebody actually was talking to me recently about um like attracting what you want versus kind of going like you going after it it's more about you attracting it to you yeah and i haven't like, yeah i'm still kind of investigating that kind of concept myself but, yeah, uh, but it, it the just, law of attraction. Yeah, they they gave me a book to read that I'm gonna go check. I don't remember what it's called, so but um, we'll do that. But okay, we're we're basically done. Don't don't hang up okay. when we when I end the stream. Don't hang up right away. I just want to make sure I don't have anything extra to say to you. But um, okay. I do want to ask. It's been kind of I don't know. Do you have any questions for me as we wrap this up? Do you have anything that you've wanted wanted to ask me? Um, let's see. Oh, you don't have to. I'll hmm. put you on. Sometimes people do sometimes you know at the end of I'm the thinking. Screen, they're like oh. okay you have to give yourself a future statement so then when you look back on this video oh you'll have something uh, to look on okay that's my question well, what would that statement okay. be okay the first one i've used this before actually and i don't know if i should use it again but like if i'm talking mm -hmm. to myself in the future this is what I, i'd be like you made it zim mm -hmm. you made it yeah as that's like you did it and then like your future video self being like yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you did it. I did that once at a, we did that, actually, I did that, like, because the idea of these being time capsules is something I've used a lot in my different po podcasts and different things. And so I asked another, like a band, what they would say to their future selves or something, similar idea. And, mm. um, and uh, they said I had to do it too. And that was what I said. Because at that time, I was struggling uh -huh. hard. Going back to that fake it, like having to fake happiness for, and that's, uh -huh. I was, dead in the middle of that life for myself and so yeah. so that's what so maybe i could listen back to that podcast and be like oh i made i did yeah because i'm actually a lot happy like i'm a lot lot happier than i was like six uh -huh. years ago six seven eight years ago i was it was hard it was hard yeah but i'm doing yeah i'm doing better well, yeah oh seraphina any last um any any last words of wisdom you want to share anything you want to put a stamp on the, the the end of this podcast with you any anything else that you'd like to say let's do a quick, um, let's do but as as you're thinking about that let's also mm -hmm. do like where can people find you like what do you oh. what's your youtube handle what's your tiktok handles what are those things yeah so everything is just my name seraphina gargiulo s-e-r-a-f-i-n-a-g-a-r-g-i-u oh well it's all the same and then on that link on society, or sorry, with on my personal channel on YouTube, if you click it on top of the banner, Society Perspective will be right there. So you can also search up Society Perspective. And I'm also going to be like rebranding a little bit with kind of both of them, mainly Society Perspective. So there might be a little pause between that just because I need to regroup some ideas and everything. But yeah. Well, I do have your personal vlog channel linked up to this video right now so thank you they can find that hopefully but serafina thanks so much for hanging out with me this is thank awesome. you i hope we can i know it's it. been great and yeah. this is my first one so yeah. yay I'm excited. so i guess my words of wisdom um for uh unsolicited wisdom um kind of just say yes to some opportunities i would mm. say oh man you never know yeah but it's also, you can say no to things, but also it's kind of like a balance between the two. We'll have to we'll have to start. Let's do this again sometime. Let's check back yes. in in like a year or something, or what, two years, or whatever. At some point, and we'll start. We'll try to start with that because that's I have a lot to say about that. Yeah, that concept and for it's, sure. It's true and it's awesome. So yes, but thank you very much for being a part of this. I look forward to of course. continuing. Thank you for having me. I you. appreciate it. Awesome. It's so fun. I'll always remember my first live stream <laughs> and first thing not on my channel. So I appreciate it. All right, cool. All right, I like to sign off with this. I say. 
Be loving, kind, and patient. Peace. Bye.